Now my wife, she uses a wheelchair. She can walk a little bit, but most of the time she's in her wheelchair. And the problem was when we moved into this suite, basement suite, it has this gravel and flagstone path going up to the gate and the driveway where we park our vehicle. Well, she just couldn't navigate that. Now, since my wife can't use that path, I've come up with another solution. This is what I have to cover, overcome. I've got a 40 inch drop from the driveway down this rock face to the uh, patio where we enter. And what I have done is I've purchased a used wheelchair lift from a bus and I've made a concrete counterweight and mounting so that we can use the wheelchair lift to lift her up and down to the driveway location. Now we started this right after the uh, ground thawed and I had a neighbor friend who has a farm down the road bring his little backhoe up to dig the hole because the driveway is really hard and compact you can hardly put a shovel into it but there are some hazards of using a backhoe and uh, he dug the hole back a little too far and caught the irrigation pipe and also the wiring right off the bat we have some problems and we have to have some repairs before we can go on with our setting the forms and getting on with the project. Well you can see here in this picture the complex cut that I had to make to uh, trace around the outside of the rock face. So my sister held the plywood up to the rock face for me while I traced it with a pencil and cut it out with a jigsaw. And of course it was inspected by Miss Lily, our site supervisor, and it passed. Now the rocks, as you can see, they're not straight, it's pretty hard to build a form, so I had to do tracings. You can see here I had to put in pieces I'd cut off this piece over here and reverse them to fit in there. Fit all the little nooks and crannies. And here you've got to fit. Looks nice and straight on the on the inside. And got some rocks and boulders holding it in place. A splice here that holds it in this piece in place. On this side I'm just making up the filler for here. This is it here. Gotta put a little notch in the corner to fit down here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna notch this out right now. Well now you see the piece fitted in here. Quite critical here around the rock down wanted to seal so that I don't get concrete leaking out. It's finicky work on the outside here. You see I'll just fill this gap in with a rock but as you can see the cut itself is kind of finicky but if you take your time with a jigsaw mark it from the inside and nip it off you get a decent fit. So. We'll go ahead and we'll install this. Hard to one hand it, but there it is. That's it fit into place. Now we just have to put some screws along the top where we can reach. See, I've had to put the screws in from down below here because I can't get down under the dirt. So my pattern, you can see the screw head sticking through here. My pattern is already too low to finish off and you see it just goes right along and seals and uh, that's fine that'll be below grade so the cement can't won't creep up so we'll fill right up to the top with concrete and I see a few pieces of rebar here I'll show you right there underneath there's a piece there, there's one on the far corner, one on the other corner, and a little farther in. And I just used those instead of the wooden stakes. I cut all these wooden stakes, but they won't go into this ground save your life without busting and splitting. So the rebar 
just goes in nicely drive it in and uh, it keeps the form from pushing out you know keeps it nice and snug all right we'll fasten this in work I got done today okay we got her braced we've got rebar pinned into the ground holding my board back extra reinforcement with the ropes pulling back and that holds the face in place it's going to take a bit of weight here with the concrete so there we are I've wet it all down inside so it uh, it'll compact to a degree I'll do that a couple more times and compact it again get it nice and firm and there we have it fancy patterns here boy to patch it up and these uh, here's my rebar a re so I'm going to go in on top. You'll see how I do that in the next uh, little portion here. Now we're set up to do the uh, reinforcement and put in my concrete blocks. You'll see what I'm going to use those for just shortly. But you'll see I had to put up a canopy to get a little bit of shade here. It wasn't uh, the nicest weather to do this. It was very hot, 33 degrees Celsius or 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So this helped me a great deal to keep me at least shaded while I'm working. I've laid my uh, 10 blocks in my form here. The idea of the blocks is to uh, just add reinforcement to the slab as well as I don't have to pour as much concrete now. It all becomes an integral part of the slab. We're doing about 10 inches here so that's a lot of, a lot of concrete to mix by hand so I won't have to mix near as much. Plus it's a cheaper alternative. The blocks are half the price of the concrete mix. So whatever volume I use up with blocks, I'm saving in dollars for the concrete mix. Now I've started to lay in the rebar. And as you can see, I'll zoom in here a bit, I've wired the rebar into vertical rods. I've put vertical rebar in down drove three foot rebars down into the ground and I'm putting them on with a twist wire there's one you can see and there's in the surrounding blocks and that should hold any lateral movement whatsoever once it's all one slab you see also down below I have put in three quarter inch ledgers these are just laid in strips and what that is going to do is allow the concrete once it's poured to uh, flow underneath the block and around the ends of the block and these concrete blocks will all be just one great big slab and you can see these rings these are for my hold back I have a turnbuckle hold back going up to the lift once it's in and those will be cemented right in place this board will stay in place and be beneath the concrete so in a hundred years it'll probably rot and here's the view from down below with uh, all our bar in here and the two bars that join together there in the middle I've wired them together as well you can see right here so this whole bar, when you try and pull on it, it's absolutely solid. You know, that's gonna work out really, really nice. I've laid the uh, lift on its back. You can see through this chain link fence here. This is the base plate. And uh, difficult to see, but there's, you can see those the light shining through those two holes at the top, two at the bottom, and it's the same on this other. And here there's so there's eight bolts all together. So what I did is I took a piece of plywood and I clamped it to the base plate, it's like this now. And uh, I've marked out where the bolts actually go here, here. So this will give me a template to keep the bolts exactly where I need them. And then on the back side, if I can do this one-handed one here, 
on the back side, I've taken these channels, metal channels, and I've welded cross hatch with my cutter, and I've welded the base as well as to start with, I tacked them inside here to keep them in place. And now these are going to sit on top of the rebar. I'll show you that in a second. It's because they're going to lay right on top of the rebar. And I will uh, tack weld those to the rebar. Then uh, these braces will be buried in the concrete tacked to the rebar which is buried in the concrete uh, which is concrete's attached to all the concrete blocks to add uh, the, the weight as well and uh, that'll allow me to pour concrete keep these in the exact position I need them for the base plate to bolt down to and uh, we'll see it better work or I'm in big trouble next step we're going to install put this in and uh, tack them to the uh, rebar. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've leveled the rebar front to back on this portion here so that the bolts also will be at a perfect uh, perpendicular 90 degrees to the rebar. That just served its purpose. It's kept all the bolts straight so it's been removed from the form and now all my what I did is the template came to here and I tack welded a couple on each end on the other side as well there and the the board was right across here so once those were tacked they were firmly in place I removed the template now all my bolts are in the right spot and I continued along as you can see along here 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 I tack welded the uh, U channel right to the rebar and now it's solid it's really solid so now we can go ahead and when we're finished the concrete will bury all of this all will be sticking up is the bolts and then the wheelchair lift the bolt holes will line up with the ones in the form here and we'll hoist that into place and drop it down over the bolts and bolt her down Here's my concrete shaker. Piece of long rebar, I can reach right down into the concrete and weld it onto the air hammer. And this sleeve, you just hang on to this so it goes back and forth inside. It won't hurt your hand and we're gonna give that a try for shaking the concrete. Okay, it's coming along. Slow but sure, brutal on the back. Got a ways to go yet. At this point, it's 7 o'clock at night, and we ran out of cement. Can you believe it? I'm about four bags short. Anyway, you can see how it's all coming together. My eye bolts are going to be cemented in for extra tie back. You'll see that later. And uh, my bolts for holding the wheelchair lift down are going to be cemented right into the form here. So, we'll get some more cement tomorrow and finish her off. Well, this has been a long project, a long time getting here. Finally, my slab is ready. My bolts and my eye bolts are in. My anchor bolts are in. Uh, the next step is to, uh, the base was a little cruddy on the bottom of the lift, so I'm going to paint the bottom of the lift. When that's dry, we can lift the lift into position and then get all the uh, electrics working. It's coming along nicely. As I say, it's taken a long time. A lot of work for an old man. Anyway, uh, until next time, when we'll probably be... Uh, mounting the lift under the bolts here. Just love to walk right through that, but it's still wet yet. Although it's drying very, very fast. It's probably 33 degrees here, which would be in the 
80s in Fahrenheit. You'll notice I put some masking tape around the bolts. Keep the threads clean. That's ah, just going to save me a little bit of work. Not have to polish those up afterwards. Hmm. Here we go. The stamp of approval. And we'll just wait till that sets up. I let the slab cure for a week and now it's time to install my turnbuckles to my eye bolts and uh, tie this back to the concrete using this threaded rod. Now while I was drilling the holes for uh, my eye bolts I was wondering to myself, why, why am I putting in eye bolts? I could just use the threaded rod and bolt it directly into the base and eliminate having to put two hooks in the threaded rod in order to hook up to my turnbuckle. So that's what I did. I changed the plan in midstream here. I'm going to bolt the uh, threaded rod right into the base itself. A little tight to get into, we couldn't, so I had to use a screwdriver to hold the nut on the other side. But then I measured and marked the rod, what length I needed, and the idea is to put a hook in the end of this threaded rod that will uh, fasten right to the eye bolt. And so I use my trusty acetylene setup and put some heat to it and did some bending. Okay. One of the pieces I used was my acetylene setup, acetylene oxygen, for heating the rods. And here, give you a close up shot. We mounted the rod in through the frame here. Had a special nut that came with this rod, that's why I used it. It's got a spring on the back side so it stays tight on the inside before you tighten this one. And we shaped the rod using heat. Again, we put our own hook on it to tie in with our bolt here. Got these snugged up nice and tight. So the idea of these is that all the weight of this lift as it goes forward down below here, this is where it's going, it's dropping 43 inches down to the yard. So all the weight is in torque is forward and it is bolted down. You can see there's bolts. There's one there. There's one underneath there. There's eight bolts holding it to the concrete. But just for added assurance, I put these turnbuckles in and these tie backs. Kind of like it's uh, like a cable stay bridge, you know not relying on just the base to hold it in place. There you have it, the finished product. So we got the base in and the lift secured and we'll show you how it works here. Now power for the lift is supplied by a 12 volt deep cycle battery and I charge it approximately twice a month. It's surprising how little power this uses. It's just running a small uh, hydraulic pump. Now you see I have a gravel base to land on. I'm going to put a concrete sidewalk down here so I'll have a place to shovel the snow off and keep it clear and level in the winter time. And that's the next stage of this project is building that concrete landing pad. Uh, the next step in the uh, phase is we're going to make a landing pad here for the, for the ramp to come down and land onto. And I'm going to pour this in two sections. As you can see here, I've got a, a stop board. Now, the reason for that is uh, the pad is level all the way up to this stop board. And then it tapers down 
as you can see here uh, on the 2x4, it tapers down. 2x4 is actually above the adjacent concrete pad. So this part here from the stop board down to the adjacent pad will be tapered, be a ramp. And the dog has found a squirrel. Now here's a little tip I'd like to pass along. This is uh, just spray canola oil. You'd use for spraying your pans for cooking. And what I actually do with this is I spray the inside of my forms before I pour the concrete. And it acts as a uh, release agent and uh, the concrete doesn't stick to the wood. After a few taps, while it's, the concrete is still wet, forms a nice smooth surface, and the boards peel away without sticking or adhering to the concrete. To assist in the pour, I've made myself a little plywood bridge so I could get past my stop here and out and pour my mix right exactly where I need it. And uh, just I'll pull this little bridge back as we go. And uh, that way I can get a nice pour without having to push it all around the forms. Okay, we worked all morning. Got our first portion of the slab finished. And uh, we're just waiting on it setting up and getting a little water out of it. And we'll... Uh, do the finishing. We're going to do a sidewalk edge. With the, show you the tool here. If you're not familiar, a little tool here with a curved lip, and you go along the edge of the board with that, and give yourself a nice curved and finished edge. And I'm also going to do a uh, broom finish on it, which uh, is a process where you take. A broom of your choice and uh, brush it across the top before it sets up and it gives you a rougher surface so it's a non-slip like if you can see here I'll move you see the surface on the slab here is textured and you can see a bit of that curb edge that I was talking about okay We'll uh, be back in this in a while, keep an eye on it, finish it off. Well, it's been just about an hour, a little under an hour, and I managed to uh, broom finish it by dragging a broom across the top and do my edging, as you can see, along the edge here. So I can get a close-up. You can see how close, or uh, sorry, how <laughs> you can see how rough the surface is now. And here's the broom that I use to uh, to broom it. It's nothing special. It's just a small push broom. You can use a large one, whatever. And you just simply put it on the surface very gently. And gently drag it across and you can do whatever you want you can do sideways you can do lengthways you could do uh, miss a pass and do one across if you wanted to tartan <laughs> just kidding but some people might like something decorative with the broom finish and uh, here we are so we'll let this cure and we'll uh, finish off our this is the ramp portion this slopes up difficult to see here it slopes up from the existing concrete slab and comes up about two inches I can show you over here on the on the board you can see that pencil line that's the slope and uh, this should be interesting because I have not done a slope yet so We'll have to see how that works out. So, until next time.
we're going to just go and have a lunch and a cold drink and let this do its thing. Now the ramp portion has been poured as you can see. And there's the finished landing pad. Now Jackie can get from our suite, as you can see through the ramp there, there's the door, with a few steps to the ramp and another few steps off the ramp to the car. This is going to be very convenient for her. It's safe and fast and it was a great project for me to, to do. I enjoyed it very much. It took me a long time by myself. And there's a few tips in there for those that are watching if you're building your own project. You can use some of the concrete tips that I've left in there. Well, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ray at the Handyman's Haven.